Oh, you will. Oh my goodness. What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a 2v2 replay on a beautiful map Anorian in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. At the bottom left side we have the blue Eisenia player Erendil, his ally is the purple model player Principino, their opponent the red Gondor player Oats and his ally the green Gondor player Yoshi. Double, double Gondor against Mordor Isengard, good against Evil, El Clasico. But let's first of all talk about this matchup, okay? The matchup is actually not too bad for the double Gondor team, especially at the beginning of the game because they have the chance to go for double land, which Mordor can cover, but Isengard can't. And land is a huge advantage at the beginning of the game because on top of the additional armor you will get on it, you also deny all the leadership from your opponent team. It means Warchant, Eye of Sauron, everything is gonna be completely negated. Okay, we have a double furnace, I mean actually a furnace into the Urupit opening, um, which is pretty aggressive, and he was not able to capture this one yet. But he has Uruks now on the field, that means he should be able to protect himself no problemo. Um, you know, going for the land is a good uh, solution at the beginning, but it will also be like a handicap situation in the mid to lead game. Why? Because in order to get your Gan of the Grey into the Gan of the White, you will have to collect two power points after the heal. So you going for land means that you don't need to collect only two more power points, you actually need to collect three power points in total, which can be quite rough, um, because the creeps, they won't give you that many command power points, and you know, having Gan of the Grey sitting in your base is kind of useless, because in the patch 1.06 he cannot even get mounted on his horse when he's grey, so he's like a pleb, he's not worth the 6000, trust me on that one, um, you know, don't do that. The Isengard player should be trying to, you know, repair this with the workers. Otherwise, he might lose it to these two soldiers. Yeah, he's gonna lose it. Very unfortunate. Uh, if he would pay attention to that a bit sooner, he should, he should be able to protect this, no problemo. Because when you are playing evil factions, your workers, beside harvesting your trees and, you know, getting your resources, can also repair structures. But it's not the end of the world. So this gonna player is going for his stable, and this gonna player is also going for his stable. That's very interesting. Going for double stable is pretty good at the beginning because you can make sure to destroy the enemy lumber mills over and over again, but obviously it's gonna kind of fall down, fall off in the mid to lead game because you have two counters to that. So Mordor can go for the troll cage, and trolls are hard countering your Gondor knights, and this player can go for the pikemen, and also pikemen are hard countering your horses. I mean, I think that's not the best start for the Isengard player. I would open him with a double furnace, open, uh, you know, economical opening, just to make sure that I'm in a good spot even after losing my mills, because you can see his eco is kind of messed up a little bit, you know? By the time if you go for double furnace, you should have like a full B situation. I mean, I get it, you want to get the Uruk Pit to level 2 fast, but I think you can do that also later on. Because if you have the Uruk Pit later on, instead of going for the Urukai for 200, you can actually invest 400 for the crossbow man and... If you don't know, the crossbowmen are able to get the Uruk Pit to level 2 twice as fast. So, for example, when you want to recruit Urukai exclusively, you will have to recruit around about 8 Uruks to get the Uruk Pit to level 2, which is required for you to recruit pikemen. But if you have enough money, you can recruit 2 crossbowmen and 1 Urukai, which is done way, way faster, and this way your Uruk Pit is going to be able to get to level 2 also way, way faster. Okay, the Gondor Knights are coming, it looks like you want to creep this, which I'm assuming is going to be invested into the Gun of the White power point later on. Yeah, creeping action, the other Gondor player is doing the same thing. Mm, okay, I mean, I get it, but I think um, the priority should be to destroy the mills first. The creeps are still remaining on the field, by the way, beside this one, and the green Gondor player is going to be able to get this one, including the money, now... There is an advantage for the Gondor faction, because the Gondor faction's citadel is the only citadel in the game from the castle that can shoot. So when you creep the troll layer, the troll will keep, you know, <laughs> chasing you all the time until you kill him. He will not stop. And when you close the gate, he will attack the gate, by the way. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. The troll is like, you destroyed my home. I will take your life. In a video game. Okay, so he's dancing around the Rosie, making sure the citadel, the white citadel from the green gunner player is able to take down the troll creep. And killing the troll also gives you around about a quarter power point. And 
and I of Sauron is able to reveal the Hobbit, no problemo. I see you, <laughs> as Sauron would like to see. The Mora player is going for the Troll Cage, his eco is looking much much better than from his ally. The Isengard player needs actually lots of money in order to get to the, back to the game. Because Isengard in compared to Mordor needs definitely way more money at the, in the mid game. You need to build up the armory, get forge plates, heavy armor, banner, fire arrows. Then you need to recruit your Uruk and crossbowmen, they cost 200 and 400 each. You combine them for 600 resources. You need to buy at bare minimum heavy armor and also fire arrows, very important. That means you need to invest so much more money in compared to the Mordor, who can just keep recruiting trolls until he will have enough money for the Witch King. Okay, we have Faramir on the field, very interesting build order by the way. He went for the double horse into the Faramir. I mean, Faramir is not a bad choice. Even double Faramir could be actually nice. Nice. Okay, beautiful. Smart move from the Gondor player to trample down the orcs because the troll could keep eating them all the time. The find an orc to eat ability has like zero cooldown. Oh, he did it. He did it. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Oh, oh Faramir is being chased on and he's gonna get out by being the knight of Gondor. <laughs> but Faramir, your father, Denethor, is not gonna be proud of you. Because of the running away action. Okay, he went for the Blitz to destroy the buildings a bit faster. And Mordor is making sure to protect the camp or castle in this case with multiple towers. So Isengard needs some assistance very, very soon. Because pikemen, they are not in the spot where they should be. They should be trying to protect this. But the Isengard player is trying to put some counter pressure with the pikemen. I mean, this Gondor, by the way, is kind of rich. Holy Kuakamoli, he has already 5,000 resources in the bank before Isengard was getting the chance to even get his armory upon the field. That means it's gonna be a very early Gandalf the Grey, but he has the power points to turn him into the Gandalf the White. Great, great, great. Okay, so the Troll Cage is level 2. The first Drama Troll is on his way. That's pretty good. Faramir! He even war chanted by Faramir, the captain of Gondor. He will, you know... Faramir, dude, you are always surprising me. But only level 3, he actually killed literally nothing. Because if you don't know, if you recruit Faramir and Boromir and Beefme 1, they will come out with level 3 right from the beginning. And that means this Faramir from the Red Gondor player Oats has actually gathered zero <laughs> power points or experience. And he has also the Hobbit who is almost level 2. Look at this handsome Hobbit, you know, Peregrine took. And Lourdes is on the field, but it's a risky spot for Lourdes to be in. I mean, he has pikemen to back him up, but still, you know. Because Gandalf is going to be there very, very soon. No armory. He might go for a, for a, a Saruman at this point. And let me check the money from Mordor. That's also very important. He has 2,500. So obviously, Mordor Isengard, very strong combination in the mid to late game. Especially late game because they will become almost immortals with all the insane amount of leadership bonuses they will get. Warchant, I, Drama Troll, Witch King, Darkness. And they can even shut down your leadership with the Freezing Rain. But keep in mind that you have... To fight against two wizards and you have only one lord so you have only one cripple and gandalf gandalf in this case the plural is very very strong they can one shot everything so two easter lights are enough for example to kill the witch king from 100 to zero you know they, they can one shot lords they can one shot saruman they have two wizard blast so you can be quite annoying you don't have to commit in an all-out fight you can go for the harassment instead Oh, he crippled Faramir. Oh, oh, but where is Gandalf when we need him? Gandalf was already on the field. That means Cripple is no longer available for the Lords. And all this Gandalf needs to do now is come downstairs and Easter it this dude. I mean, this guy is gonna die. Actually, not. Oh, 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 he's gonna die. He got experience from it. Beautiful. Level 3, he, bl he blasted them. He's even using this Carnage, but doesn't matter. He's gonna get Easter lighted. And he's gone. He's fired. Okay, Gandalf can now do whatever he wants. He knows now that Lourdes is dead. It means he doesn't need to be afraid of anything but will eventually come. Isengard money is looking great. He's almost up to 5,000, which will be invested into the Saruman. But again, please keep in mind that Saruman is a great wizard, but no match against Gandalf the White. Mordor is getting also stronger and stronger. And hold on. <laughs> my bad. Actually, my bad. He doesn't go... F I mean, I just checked the money from Mordor and not from Isengard. My bad. <laughs> Isengard going for the armory. He's not even close to be getting to the point in which he can eventually recruit Saruman. 
We just check the money from Mordor. He's saving up for a, for a Witch King eventually. Very, very soon. But also Trolls, they don't stand a chance against Gandalf. Um, they do later on when they have enough leadership with the Drummer Troll and Witch King. They don't get one shot anymore from the Easter Light. But until this is gonna happen, you gotta be a little bit more careful. Because losing a troll to one single Easter Light like you will do now hurts. They cost around about 900 resources, which is quite a lot of money for Mordor. The troll is chilling. I mean, now you can actually commit. But he needs a drummer troll nearby, you know? That's very important for more leadership, especially armor leadership. That's the most important part. Um, this dude can also lightning sword you. He's gonna actually lose one of the Golden Knights. We get more and more of them. Lots of Golden Knights upon the field. He blasted the troll on the ground. He's auto-attacking him. And the shield bubble. I'm a servant of the secret fire. The <laughs> okay. Gandalf actually MVP, dude. You see, the trolls without leadership bonuses, they don't do anything against Gandalf. Not, not only they can they would die in a, in a few seconds, but also they actually don't deal too much damage to him. Uh oh, now we have a double Gandalf situation, by the way, guys. One of them is at the bottom side, the other one is in the bees. But there is a Lord who is on the on the hunt. He wanna hunt down his Gandalf all the time. Now the commitment on the troll on the troll cage. Very important structure, the most valuable structure in the Mordor Beast, definitely, because losing it would mean that you won't be able to recruit any more drummer trolls anytime soon. And losing the ones you have on the field um, will be much more punishing if your troll cage is only level 1. I mean, Gandalf is trying to avoid this Lourdes, which you can easily, because you are way, way, way faster than Lourdes. So if you are playing smart, you should never get give Lourdes the chance to cripple you. And then you should be just fine. But you can see the two Gandalfs, one of them at the bottom, one of them in the top side, are putting so much pressure. There comes the Visa Plus, boom, nice. All the pikemen are gone. We have lots of uh, very strong Gunner Knights upon the field. One of them is even being almost level 6. With the shields and heavy armor, they are quite beefy and tanky. They can tank and absorb lots of damage from the towers. A great performance from the double Gunner team, I need to see. There comes the Lightning Sword on the Citadel. Very smart move. Lightning Sword. Besides dealing hella damage to the units, also destroys buildings. And that's a very um, important structure, because when this is down, Isengard can't rebuild anything, nor revive heroes. And that's also gonna cost you 1000. It's a lot of money you need to invest, and also time. But Witch King is gonna be recruited very soon. I think that's gonna be um, very good for Mordor Isengard team to give some briefing room, you know, to the Mordor Isengard team. Especially Isengard needs it. Like, he has lost half the bees. I mean, he's gonna get chunked now. And he's pinging him, by, him, by the way. He's saying, okay, there is a Witch King. We gotta take care of him. And there comes the second Gandalf. And that's the thing I was talking about. Two Easterites are more than enough to do that. And the Witch King can't approach them anymore. Knowing the fact that there is another Gandalf with the Easterite being available. Where is Lords when we need them? Did he actually lose the Lords? The Isengard is actually kind of poor. He doesn't even have the money to rebuild this, can you imagine? Like, he's so much down. Okay, there comes a blast. He's holding the Easter Light Witch King. I don't know where Witch King is. He's actually chilling and regenerating his HP. Now he should be being healthy enough to commit, I think. But it's too risky, you know? It's too risky because the Easter Light is almost back up. I think it's gonna be kind of quite punishing. There is Lords who's gonna be enough to... I think Lourdes and um, Witch King, they gotta work together in this situation. You know, because the, the Gondor Gondor team, they're obviously trying to burst down the Witch King, who is going to be the main threat, you know, when it comes to the Gondor Knights, because Gondor Knights, they can't do anything against them. If you ignore him, he will keep, um, you know, killing your Gondor Knights over and over again, and that's the reason why you should try to burst them. Okay, there comes a Screech. We have lots of pikemen up on the field. The combo is glowing, shining bright like a diamond from the Witch King leadership, from the Drummer Troll. Lourdes is all about to get level 5 too, for even more leadership. But the Troll Cage has been taken down. It means no more Drummer Trolls anytime soon. You know what would be great in a situation like that? I'm telling you guys, Mooma Kills. Mooma Kills can hard counter any hero, including Gandalf. They can actually one-shot him. And that's a very great synergy with like a hero like Witch King. So there is a downside of Gandalf. And the downside is that in order to cast a spell, Gandalf has to stand still for multiple seconds. 
And on top of that, after casting, for example, the Israelite, you can't move for like 3 seconds, which is enough time for the movement kill to use a charge attack on you, and you will get one-shotted. Literally. From 100 to 0. The movement kill steps on you, you are dead. I mean, archers are shooting. Um, they are going from one base to the other base. Very, very interactive gameplay. I like it. You know... Did you see the double gun of scary moment? It's pretty pretty strong. Can you imagine that? It's kind of very impressive. They are winning the game without any archers so far. He just built the archer range for the first time. But he didn't recruit any archers yet. I mean, they gotta be still fast though. Because I believe the longer the game goes on, the more harder it's gonna be for the double gun team. Because once Isengard has two armies, he can keep one of them in the one base, the other one in the other base, and then he doesn't need to rotate. Like, for now, they are, you know, doing their best to kind of get the advantages from the Gunner Knights. Being the mob, you know, this being the mobility, of course. Oh, 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 oh. You can't tank this. Oh, what happened here? H how? Did he miss the cripple? Oh, there comes a second wizard blast. <laughs> what, a, what a second wizard blast. The, the poor combo getting bullied hardcore, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with the one Ganda. Can you imagine? In the, in the films, you know? They, there were two Gandalfs, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was already intense, the amount of help. Oh, 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 oh! Okay, that's what I'm talking about. He cancelled it, very important. If you don't cancel it, you will lose. Do they have the Easter lights? Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Mortal player is smart. He is trying to be with the trolls nearby, so... When Gandalf is gonna use it, look, you see? He's forcing them to cancel it all the time. You can't do that you know <laughs> when there is a witch king when there are trolls chasing you can't stand and cast a spell because then you can't move like i mentioned before and then you will be doomed i mean isengard went for the devastation which is very helpful um but i think he still needs m more time you know and more money too he has only one mil level one this mill actually level three already for a long time i think they didn't destroy this mill at all <laughs> Like the troll kit is back on the field, uh, two trolls recruited, he will need to recruit two more to get it to level 2. But I think, you know what would be a better choice, in my opinion, for the Mordor? To actually cancel the trolls, like he has 2000, so if he cancelled both of them, he would have around about 4000 and go for the Nazgul instead. Because the Witch King, yeah, can't approach, but then when you have a Witch King additional to that also a Nazgul, um, Gandalf can't, Gandalfs can only deal with one of them, but not with both of them, you know what I'm saying? Is darkness too. The red gondo captured the middle camp. He's going for the archery range and siege works for the catapult trebuchet. And this gondor has a archery range level two and also went for the siege works. I mean, the siege works at this in this game is kind of oh oh you, you see he needs to cancel it. He's being on the hunt. What is he doing? The witch king. You gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta move. You gotta move. Oh, he's gonna die now. Yeah, he's gonna die. Yeah. Oh, he got crippled. Okay. A healing is pointless, you will still die. The <laughs> trolls are slapping. I mean, one of the trolls has been taken down by the Alvin Alliance, but still. Now you trade the Witch King for Gandalf. I think it's okay to trade for the Mordor Isengard team, because now there is only one Gandalf they gotta deal with. And he has lost every single ability. Um, Gandalf is a caster, so he is not very useful when all his abilities are on cooldown. And can't do lots of stuff. And there is a Lord who is recharging the cripple ability already, so he will be able to use it one more time. I mean... The thing is, Mordor can offer lots of utility to Isengard, but again, in this matchup, it's important that Isengard is getting ahead. Isengard is the main carry in this matchup. Mordor is more like a sportive faction to give insane amount of leadership bonuses, making the allied combos nearly immortals. But that's the that's the goal of Mordor, and Mordor can offer this already with I, you know, Tainted Land, Darkness, um, but Isengard needs to get units on the field. That's the important thing, you know? Okay, I mean, he's kind of getting back into the game. Mordor is up to 4,000. Again, reviving Witch King is for free, but it will take you lots of time. And also, this Gondor player, I think the red one lost to Ganav, yeah. He's gonna revive him too. And now they are actually kind of putting everything into the middle camp. And we can use this moment to take a look into the current command points and power points. So, Erendil has the Devastation available for the second time almost, which is gonna be good, because Devastation gives you around about 1500 resources instantly. 
which in this case for Isengard is very important. And you can see double industry being used, so Mordor player, um, the purple Mordor player was also using his industry on his allies base. So we see now six furnaces burning and giving Isengard lots of money, which he definitely needs, okay? Um, then the Oats, the Gunner player, he has two power points in the bank after the Ganaf the White, the Alvin Wood and the Land. The green Gunner player Yoshi has almost five power points in the bank after the Alvin Alliance, which is good because he needs one more power point and a quarter for the Eagle Special Summon, which can be very good to kill heroes like Lourdes, for example. Even though later on, Eagles, they will get one-shotted from this combos of Isengard, but for now, they can definitely be quite impactful. And yeah, that's it. And Mordor has darkness. He's gonna use the land. Isengard could eventually cover this. No, he can't. And that's the double land advantage I was talking about at the beginning of the game too. Because now they covered this, but that's fine. Because the other Gondor player has still land available while Isengard doesn't. Okay? Devastation has been used. Isengard getting lots of money. Lucas money. He had like crazy amount of money. I think he wanna go for the, for the Saruman. Which in my opinion is a mistake. Like Saruman is good in almost every single situation, but this is not one of them, you know? <laughs> I think you need more army. He crippled him, the question is, can you kill him? Like, Drummer Troll is coming, I have seen... Okay, there comes the land, and I was talking about that, right? Now, there comes the second Gandalf, because he used the cripple, he healed him, the troll is coming, level 6 troll, but the Drummer Troll is not nearby, he's gonna just Easter him, yeah. Double Easter, that's, that's, the, that's the spirit, and that's the power of Gandalf. And yeah, Isengard definitely was cash floating too much. He could have invested so much more faster the money into the new combos. He has one combo inside the base of his ally. There are a bunch of trolls. And I think a couple of them have like throw rocks ability. So they want to actually kind of punish Gandalf if you want to stand still and shoot. The archers. Oh, oh look how many trebuchet are coming. <laughs> but they are, you know, they are in, in one single location. And the Nazgûs are dealing splash damage. So it's a lot of money. The, the weakness of the gunner faction in this situation is the lack of damage leadership. So in order to take down trolls, you know, even for example Nazgûs or Witch King, you need damage leadership. But Gandalf doesn't offer damage leadership in this game, only does offer you combat experience, fear resistant and armor, which is already very powerful, but it's not enough when it comes to fight against Mordor. Mordor trolls, they don't care about your armor leadership, they will one-shot you when they get to you. So. The only way you can get damage leadership with, you know, Gondor is Boromir. And it's only 60%, so it, it's not enough, you know, it's not enough to kill the trolls fast enough. Okay. Level 7, one of them, the other one is almost level 10. And level 10 is a huge power spike, because what you can do is you can use War of Power, and right before it goes off, you can use Elvin Wood to nullify all the bonuses from the leadership, the, Mord uh, the Isengard units are gaining, and then they have zero leadership bonuses, and you, your War of Power can one-shot them, you know? Okay, he missed it. But the level 7 Gunner Knight is gonna be saved. I think it's a mistake now to go to the middle camp, I think. The middle camp is kinda tricky from Gondor. It's like a very unique camp, unlike all the other factions. It's like a very, very low defense, only four towers inside the camp, but the thing is that you can only enter from this location. For example, Rohan, Mordor, and Isengard camps, they are open in every single way. You can come from this, from this, from this, from this, from this area, right? But you can't do the same in the Gondor camp. So in order to get in, you either need to destroy the wall piece, which is gonna take you actually surprisingly amount of, a lot of time, or you need to go all the way from this location, which then you will be clamped and one of the trebuchet shots can end your whole career you know the witch king is kind of low um lords has lost the cripple did they actually lose one of the gandalfs let me check no both gandalfs are still remaining on the field oh he's looking for a chance this is the worst combo in the game by the way in the patch 1.06 at least because they have the lowest movement speed they are way slower in compared to the crossbowman and urukai combination Double Ganov. Ganov the green and Ganov the red. I mean, to be honest, um, of course, some, some mistakes are being made from the Mordor Isengard team, but other than that, I think the Gondor team, they are actually playing a flawless game. Like, almost 
perfect. Uh, using the mobility advantage, uh, taking, rotating quite fast, adapting to the playstyle and keeping them kind of in, in a check situation. And one single mistake and they will be checkmate. And they are, you know, preparing like a plan B for the worst case scenario. So if everything falls and goes wrong, oh, what did, was this the Witch King or a Nazgul? Oh, that's the Nazgul, the Witch King. That's really bad though. Like Witch King very important. Leadership, darkness is available very soon. I think Mordor needs to do more. Again, I think Mordor doesn't expect to be the carry, but I think he gotta be the carry. Like, I'm telling you, Mooma kills or own catapults could be quite nice, you know? There comes the Saruman. We have two combos, one pikeman. I mean, they still do have drama, you know, drama troll leadership and Saruman leadership plus Warchant and plus Darkness, which is already high enough, but it's still kind of bad that you are missing out now the Witch King leadership, which is a very important leadership you don't want to miss out. The good thing is Lords is all about to hit level 5 too, for even more leadership. There comes the big base rush, but you can see every single structure is kind of shooting. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. He's going to lose the level uh, 7 Gunner Knights. Very unfortunate. Too many towers, you know? Like level 3 slaughterhouses are shooting too. Too much damage power. But I don't want to... Oh, what happened here? They got slaughtered. The trebuchet with the fire, Firestone. There comes the Saruman Wormtongue. He's going to be able to steal some of these trebuchet. But the eagles are going to be the answer to this solution to this problem. They are dealing insane amount of damage. Lourdes has to cripple. He will... Oh my goodness. Kill him. Kill this. Nazgul to it. But there is the other, other <laughs> Gandalf who's going to be here to save the day. I mean, the trolls, they finally destroyed that. But I think Isengard got kind of crashed. You know? He lost literally everything. Including his heroes, Lords and Saruman. And it's an investment of 5,000. You need to invest 5,000 to get your Saruman recruited. And I think Saruman is not needed in this matchup, you know? What you can do is go for more units. Extend your command points. Fill your command points fully with combos. And don't make this pikeman, crossbowman combo. They are just too sloppy, too slow, not worth it. And also more expensive. Because pikeman, they cost more than Uruks. And Uruks are more agile, you know? Like, have more agil agility. They're looking for a chance. Boom. And level 10. War of Power is enabled. It's gonna heal. And Nostacres on your face, son. I mean, very impressive. I think they only lost Gandalf one single time. And the Gandalfs, definitely, when they could get a kill count, about how many units they killed, how many combos they blasted, how many Nazguls they strike from the, from the heaven, and how much pressure they caused. It's kind of crazy. And the thing is that... Uh-oh, uh oh uh oh, 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 okay, never mind. <laughs> Not even close. Um, this guy was almost almost level 10 too. I think that's the first time I will ever eventually see double War of Power in one game. Like from two Gandalfs at the same time. If you even Boromir on the field, is it Christmas? Boromir was one of the rarest heroes to be seen in the patch 1.06. In the 2.22 version, it's definitely a way more reliable hero. Way more stronger hero. And Trebuchet are sieging. Isengard lost the Orphank. That means no more Lords, no more Saruman anytime soon. The pressure is real. And the most crazy thing is, <laughs> you know, uh, the Isengard Mordor team, they didn't even get the chance to see this anytime, like the entire castle from them. I think they've never reached this castle either. They don't even know what's going on there. They were like, you know, like, I think that's like a reversed uh, Black Gate mission. Don't you, don't you guys think? It feels like you are against... Minas Tirith in the evil campaign, but you feel like being the good campaign in the in the Black Gate, if this makes sense for you guys. There are waves of units, endless pressure, and you can never push back. I think that's exactly what happened. And you can see, when you micro your Gandalf very well, and you have not one, but two wizards at the same time in your team, the amount of pressure, the amount of devastation you can cause on the enemy units is kind of nutty. It's kind of history. Yeah, he study him. I think you want to get level 10 too with the red Gandalf. That comes the lightning sword. The drummer trolls, he's going to miss the lightning sword from the red one. I mean, we can call it the Gandalf show, I think. That could be the name of the, of the video. Two Gandalfs. To rule them all. He's going to leave the game now. The <laughs> Isengard player, he's like, yes, enough of this. And he's 
allied the purple mono players gonna leave right after and gg well played what do you guys think about this game please let me know in the comment section down below i hope you enjoyed this if you did you know what to do i don't need to tell you right make sure you know when you are down there you can also click on the red subscribe button because hey was guess what we are really close to 20,000 subscribers and it would be awesome if you guys can help me out to reach that i will see you next time until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out guys